boy, so I had to do some uh, some reading this morning because I woke up to a bunch of seen a bunch of tweets in my feed about something about a whistleblower and Trump, and I saw one uh, tweet from All a Pundit that had like 8,000 likes to where he's like, the only way this could get more lit is if John Bolton is the is the uh, whistleblower. So I had to look up what the heck these people were talking about because uh, certainly was nothing I've been following, uh, and apparently there was some whistleblower. Uh, that made some complaint to the inspector general about uh, Trump's Trump making some call where he promised something to a foreign leader. That's the official story so far. Now we're getting leaks, you know, based on you know the leak, uh, which is giving us more detail that it had something to do with Ukraine and Joe Biden. And I was seeing lots of tweets from your, you know, your D.C. Republican, you know, uh, media types, the kinds of people who write for, you know, like. Um, the Washington Free Beacon, those types of people, to where they're saying, oh my god, if if this is true, Trump is done. And they thought this was really bad. And of course, if those people think it's really bad, then it's probably something that is not that bad. Because the kinds of things that, you know, people, um, you know, in like the DC media orbit think is really bad, normally uh, I couldn't care less about. And the kinds of things that I think are really bad and terrible, uh, the DC media people think are actually good things. And lo and behold, uh, I was completely right. Uh, What they're so worried about is that apparently on a call with the um, newly elected uh, president of the Ukraine, which is that Zelensky guy who was a comedian. I believe he had like a late night TV show in Ukraine, and he's like, hey, let's run for president as like a bit, and then he won. Almost kind of like Trump, I guess. Yeah, so when he got into office, Trump was talking to him, and he was saying, hey, uh, Zelensky, you should reopen this case into old Joe Biden because there's a lot of uh, really shady stuff going on here uh, between uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and uh, how that case just got dropped by your government. So, you know, now that, you know, Poroshenko's out and you're in, uh, you know, you should pick up the torch and uh, start looking into this again and start unraveling that thread. And so the, the, the one, people in the media are very upset that Trump would, oh my gosh, he's trying to get Ukraine to, to look into Biden you know, and that's election interference or something, but although we're supposed to be worried about Russia interfering in the election and Ukraine is Russia's mortal enemy, so I'm not quite sure how that angle works into it. But another thing that that Trump is accused of doing, although we don't have the exact details yet, um, that is adding into the media's fury here, uh, is that he apparently threatened to withhold something like two, uh, you know, $250 million in aid uh, to uh, Ukraine uh, that has to do with them fighting you know, the Russians uh, in the east because, you know, in Donbass, there's still a war going on there. I know it, it's easy to forget. It's kind of like, you know, Syria or Yemen. It's just been going on for so many years. You know, people just don't pay attention to it. So apparently the U.S. promised to give them $250 million to help them fight that small regional conflict. And Trump uh, supposedly made some kind of case that like, hey, you know, if you don't look into Biden, maybe this money will get lost in the mail. And I think this is what the media is really furious about, the fact that uh, that Trump would uh, deny money to the great noble government of the Ukraine to fight the evil Russian hordes uh, because uh, they won't look into uh, Biden. You know, because their case is, hey, uh, Ukraine is a beautiful, wonderful, democratic, perfectly uncorrupt country, uh, and they're fighting the evil, uh, you know, neo-Nazi dictatorship of Vladimir Putin. So we should just give them all the money that they'd ever need for anything, uh, with and ask nothing in return. And certainly, we don't want them investigating Democrats because that would be that would be a bad thing. But here I am, uh, mad for a completely different reason at the president after hearing this. Um, The way I see this is that the uh, the president is trying to give away taxpayer money uh, in exchange for uh, something that helps him politically. It looks to me like he's using this $250 million not so much to blackmail the Ukraine, but that he's paying them to investigate Biden on behalf of his campaign uh, to make his re-election bit easier. So uh, a president who gives away 250 million, uh, you know, this is to me that's pretty blatant um, uh, corruption. But as the New York Times points out, uh, this is completely legal because you know corruption in the United States is uh, 
for the most part, what is considered corruption around the world was completely legal in the United States. You know, we see it all the time to where, uh, you know, Iowa corn farmers uh, give a bunch of money uh, to a certain presidential candidate during the Iowa caucuses. And then once we get elected, you know, the, that president signs a big farm bill cutting a even bigger check back to the Iowa corn farmers. And the same thing happens with unions and every other special interest group. Special interest groups cut checks to, to campaigns, uh, and then the when that person gets elected, they give them goodies. Unfortunately, that's just the way American politics works. But every time I see an example of it, I can at least call it a bad thing, uh, whether you know it's Trump doing it or whether it's that uh, terrible governor of Iowa that he uh, appointed to be, I believe, the ambassador to China. Or whether it's someone who is, you know, terrible, awful, and corrupt like Joe Biden, uh, who has been in politics for his entire life and is certainly, uh, you know, uh, it's six feet under uh, the at least uh, the the uh, swamp uh, and corruption. In fact, he's even further than six feet. He's beyond. Uh, he's beyond neck deep, and the only way he's able to uh, to breathe under there is with a uh, with a, a little scuba gear. You know, it would seem as though that Trump, in this case, has only adopted the swamp. Uh, Biden was born in it, molded by it. Because when you start to look into what it is that Trump was actually asking uh, the Ukraine uh, to investigate about Biden, apparently uh, what Biden and, – and, and Biden has bragged about this in public. He said at the Council on Foreign Relations, you couldn't pick a more swampy place uh, to, confess your, your, to confess your crimes. Biden went out and said, yeah. Uh, I put pressure on the Ukrainian government to fire their uh, – what was their equivalent of their attorney general? I forget what they call the guy. And he blackmailed them for even more money than uh, – in fact, four times as much money as what Trump's accused of. Uh, Biden apparently told uh, 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 the uh, president of the Ukraine, hey, you're going to lose a billion dollars if you don't fire this guy who's looking into me and my son. Uh, because this uh, prosecutor or attorney general, whatever you want to call him, uh, he was looking into a, a natural gas company uh, as a part of uh, some big corruption scandal in the Ukraine, which I, I didn't really follow very closely, but I, I know that it happened. I remember it from the time. Uh, apparently, this natural gas company uh, happened to have as one of its board members uh, one Hunter Biden. And I'd have to imagine, based on uh, all this, that what Biden was worried about is that uh, if this corruption investigation went on, that this natural gas company, uh, it would have been exposed, had gotten some concessions from the government uh, based on the fact that they have Joe Biden's son on their board and that uh, the Obama administration uh, you know, lobbied the government to give special concessions to this natural gas company. And that, of course, would be you know plain and obvious corruption that would make Joe Biden look very bad if he ever wanted to run for president in, let's say, the year 2020. And so it seems that the, uh, the media is very conveniently trying to avoid talking about the Biden side of the scandal and only talking about the Trump side of the scandal, even though it you know certainly looks to me like the Biden side is much worse. And again, they're not even getting it mad at Trump for the right reasons, in my opinion. What they you know think is a problem – uh, with Trump, I don't. I think that's a non-issue. I mean, what Joe Biden did or is alleged to have done is clearly worse. And even if you just want to use the money involved as a measurement of how bad the scandal is, Joe Biden's scandal involves four times the amount of money. So I guess we'll wait and see if anything comes out of this. I guess the, uh, you know, the never-ending uh, impeachment squad in <clears throat> in the U.S. Congress is trying to use this, but I, I don't think that'll go anywhere. Uh, but, it, you know, if any more news does come out of this, whether it regards to Trump, Biden, or both of them, um, I will keep you posted. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And if you uh, haven't already, uh, please do share this video because uh, it's really the only way that it gets around. I don't... <laughs> You know, I don't do very well when it comes to YouTube recommendations, certainly. Uh, you know, I, 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 can't, I throw all the red flags that you can on there, I, except for maybe profanity. I, I, I manage to stay away from that, but I don't know what else triggers the, the red flags in their system. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.